Hey, what's going on guys, Arava here, and welcome back to the last the Question Mark Challenge here today for round number two of the 2018 Formula 1 season at the Bahrain Grand Prix. Of course, two weeks ago, we kicked this thing back off for the 2018 season at the Australian Grand Prix with Daniel Ricciardo. Today, you can see we're going to be driving a Sebastian Vettel in his Scuderia Ferrari car. I thought I'd pick last race, the opening rounds uh, winner from the real-life Grand Prix. Sebastian Vettel, of course, won against Lewis Hamilton, so I thought I'd pick Vettel and see how far up the order we can get. If you're on your round here and you're not familiar with the last the Question Mark Challenge, we're here here for a 25% race of the Real Life Grand Prix that's about to be this weekend and we're going to try and see how far up the order we can get with the driver we've chosen. Of course, here with Vettel and Ferrari, I'll be hoping to try and aim for at least getting back on the podium where hopefully Ferrari in Real Life are aiming for another podium at the bar Real Life Bahrain Grand Prix. And we'll see if we can maybe do any wizardry of predicting anything from, from the races. I don't think we actually predicted anything in the last ch uh, challenge we did at the Australian Grand Prix because in that one I think Alonso went out, that didn't happen. Um, I don't think I even predicted the correct winner in that one so uh, unfortunately we didn't uh, do any wizardry there but you never know it can definitely happen it, you know I'm waiting for that moment where we really get something spot on here but uh, here in the Ferrari you know obviously 25% race so hopefully not dawdling to make some overtakes but I think we should have some really good straight line speed it's just going to be a case of really uh, getting past the first bit of traffic and then seeing how we do on the soft tires you know Bahrain also on this game is not my favourite circuit in the world so that's going to be more of a concern of just my general pace against the AI but we'll see how it goes it's going to be a one stop obviously with a 25% race super soft tyres to the soft tyres then going to fill up a bit more fuel because with the 2018 mod the fuel burns a little bit faster so going to have to watch out for that but here we go then to five red lights to the Bahrain Grand Prix 14 laps to try and see how far up the order we can get here we go as the lights go out and we're underway it's a slow sluggish start there from Pierre Gasly then the Frenchman in the Toro Rosso Honda car as we go down towards the inside now up into P19 now easy does it on the brakes trying to suss out where we can go we're going to try and follow through Sorokin there the Russian in the Williams go side by side with Brendan Hartley around the outside of him just giving him the room by lifting off and Ocon has been squeezed out then by the Russian so can we try and go on the left hand side it's going to be a, a three wide moment there between myself the Williams and the Force India and it's three wide up ahead between the other Force India of Sergio Perez and it looks like to be the two Renault cars of Carlos Sainz and Hulkenberg as they go side by side into the S section then as we go right and then quickly left we're going to keep it in fifth gear just lift off and try and toss out where we can go we're going to fake to left almost and then go to the right down the inside of the Mexican in the Force India and we're up into P12 so pretty good going there and actually quite uh, quite good that we kept our kind of nose clean there you know the only kind of close thing was with Brennan Hartley there but now we could have a little look at Carlos Sainz not quite as he's squeezed out by his teammate there so can we have a good run of him now obviously Ferrari v Renault we should have a bit of a speed advantage but he's got some good toe off his teammate when we dive down the inside there and on the apex we get uh, we, we get a bit of understeer ourselves and that kind of helped us actually to push out Sainz a little bit as we open up the steering wheel uh, to try and make the corner up into P11. Then. So only one position then off full points paying position. So I would say compared to the Australian Grand Prix, I think we made some better progress here. I think we should be got a good, you know, to get some high points. I say that, knock on wood, we'll see how the next cars go. Obviously, as we go up the grid, it's just going to get harder and harder to make the overtakes. But Hamilton at the moment starts to pass up the Grand Prix, as you would imagine, being up in the lead of the race. I think the next car along after Hulkenberg is one of the McLaren cars. We can see the mini map, bit of a gap there. So Hulkenberg not getting any slipstream to help him out here. And he's a bit defenseless. He goes to the inside there. We're on the outside, just easy does it on the normal racing on the brakes. And he goes on the curbing quite a bit, slows him down mid apex, and we're able to squeeze him out into turn two very, very easily. Actually, there, Nico kind of did, uh, didn't do himself any favours as he got too much on the curbing. There, we got yellow flags up ahead. So is that a retirement out uh, ahead of us? It looks like, uh, yeah, a car parked up on the left. Virtual safety car is called out. And it's going to be for Max Verstappen, and that's actually, funny enough, parked up in the same place he actually retired in the real life uh, Bahrain 2017 Grand Prix, if I remember correctly. There, so uh, you know, quite funny actually, the exact same spot where he had that brake issue there. He retires out of a mechanical failure, I'm guessing. Maybe it could be another brake issue for him, but virtual safety car then uh, comes out momentarily. It's called back in now on the end of lap two. Bit of a snap of oversteer as we try and get underway, and now we're pushing on. So we're up into P9, so we gain one free position there, and now we've got uh, DRS enabled. We uh, pick up one more place as Daniel Ricciardo is into the pits on lap three. So hang on, could have been maybe some contact between the two Red Bull teammates, perhaps. Maybe Ricciardo, that's why he's come in on lap three so early. Maybe he made contact with Verstappen and that's why Verstappen's out of the Grand Prix so let's see if I can predict some of that I mean if that happens in the real life race that would be quite quite something sparks flying between the two Red Bull guys the Red Bull Civil War that would be quite something but we move on now and we're closing up to Fernando Alonso actually surprisingly behind his teammates off Van Dorn at the moment and they're both uh, stuck behind one of the Haas cars of I think that's Kevin Magnussen as I think Roman Grosjean is uh, up ahead in that other train there so 
Uh, Grosjean are doing a great job to be quite some way as we now make a very late dive and late choice dive on Alonso there. That was a last minute decision, but I could see Alonso going a little bit slow into the corner there. And obviously, we, as I said at the very start, we can't dawdle with these overtake with only a finite amount of laps left, of course. You know, we, we're already three to nearly four laps in, and so we've only got 10 laps left. So, going to make it happen when we can. And so, as we go down the main straight now, trying to see what's going to happen up ahead. I think Van Dorn looks rather close to that hat, so he might have an opportunity to make an overtake with DRS, of course. Uh, likewise with us but looks like into turn one he can't make it happen he's gone very slowly and we nearly hit the back of him there as we close in so fast and Fernando Alonso has tried a cheeky little pop down our inside didn't make it work though and a little bit of contact was made and we just uh, had a bit of an elbow situation out there into turn two so we keep the seven but Van Dorn really slowed up there because it looks like Magnussen kind of got his elbows out into turn one forced him a bit too wide and I just closed up so rapidly and I didn't think I was going to close up that rapidly and so now we have to recompose ourselves and now we go for the dive down the inside of Van Dorn lock up on the right tire but we've got it there control the car into the mid apex and we're up into P6 so that time I did mean to go diving down the inside of Van Dorn and getting rather close to his car there and we made it work and now we move on later onto the end of lap four towards the final corner and we're closing and closing on Kevin Magnussen he's going to move to the inside uh, but not quite he moved to the mid all that made things awkward because I tried to look down the inside there and just didn't have the confidence that I thought Magnussen could have maybe pinched me a bit too much into the apex there so I thought better of it and so we're just going to take this nice and calmly open DRS here and then as we go and cross the line for lap number five we'll get cleanly past him even before we start breaking there and we're up into P5 and behind I can see we're proximity arrows going left and right and it looks like the McLarens now are going to be able to once again try and hound down Kevin Magnussen but we're up into P5 a lot of clean air ahead and so now we can just concentrate on the lap times really and you can see now we are closing up to Grosjean but there was such a big gap between this little train and Magnus and the two McLarens and then uh, the tail end of Grosjean and the rest of the pack that there was just a lot of free air and it wasn't really there wasn't much really going on I just have to kind of push on you can see there clearly up into P3 is uh, a few people make their pit stops and so is now the pit stop window ready for everyone you can even see for me on the heads up display on the bottom right there the green indicator for the pits uh, saying that I should come in but you can see on the next up end Raikkonen comes in so just like happened at the Australian Grand Prix my teammate comes in uh, on the kind of the lap I almost wanted to but this time around Bahrain unlike Australia I wanted to go a little bit longer because the soft tyres and generally anything but the super softs for me personally just don't really work too well at Bahrain I prefer the kind of grip in of the super soft so even worn super softs to me feel more comfortable than the soft tyres even though the lap time may not be as good as fresh suit uh, as fresh softs as they were on that last lap there on super soft tyres just for comfortability's sake I'd rather just stay a little bit longer on those red wall tyres but we come in anyway on lap 9 and kind of work worked out anyway with Raikkonen coming in and so we were behind Grosjean ahead of Magnussen before we came in we now come out and where are we going to be there goes Grosjean there and you can see Bottas is actually behind us so somehow we've uh, managed to jump Valtteri Bottas I don't actually know how that happened um, because I'm pretty sure the order was Grosjean and at least Bottas but ahead of uh, Grosjean so maybe Bottas just really lost that much time in the pit lane and uh, then the outlap maybe he got held up by Grosjean we definitely also closed up more to Grosjean as well on track as well we weren't this close before the pit stop phases so very very odd so we've gained quite a bit there actually uh, not only uh, no, not only track time but also one position so now we're on the back of Roman then as we go on towards lap number 10 so only five laps to go now including lap number 10 we open DRS then and here we go Ferrari v Ferrari but I have DRS here and so in the century we move to the left Grosjean not putting up too much of a fight there and we go a bit more to the inside then swipe across a little bit we although we do lock up on the front right and Grosjean might get his nose in there just about get it yes I think so that was very very tense there on the right hand side Grosjean definitely tried to peek it around the outside just didn't have the downfall so we go to lean mixture now as you can see I'm running out of fuel a little bit here already so that's what I meant and that's why I said again fuel very crucial and even more so compared to my mod career with the 50% race and a 25% race the fuel is just even more tight because you're wanting to push that much faster in this challenge there so having to go lean momentarily but now as we move on later on to lap 11 there's yellow flags and I think that might be another car out it's Lewis Hamilton he's out of the Bahrain Grand Prix and so if that happened in the real life race that would be quite something indeed and so we're up into second place it's a 1-2 
for Scuderia Ferrari. Because remember, Bottas was behind Grosjean already. So it's a Ferrari 1-2 and it's a Haas number 3. So three Ferrari engine cars on the podium at the moment. That's absolutely scenes here at the Bahrain Grand Prix. But it's not over yet because you can see there in the mirrors there and proximity arrows. We move on to lap 12. We've got Grosjean coming right back up our chuff. We're in standard mixture. Grosjean may well be in rich mix with DRS open. And also Valtteri Bottas on the left-hand side. And so going to turn one, it's three wide momentarily as Bottas tries to feed it around the outside. And he has done it. It's a fantastic attempt by Bottas around the outside of two cars there, Valtteri is. And he's up into P2 now by just one car led there. We have to tuck in right back behind him in the gearbox phase and try and get around the outside if we can. It's going to be close and we're going to have a side-by-side -side moment and an absolute ding-dong battle here with Valtteri Bottas round the outside again in the S section there. And we got it. And it was crucial, actually, that moment where I just tucked up behind his gearbox, practically touching it. Got that moment of slipstream. Allowed me to get the overspeed then to send it around the outside and make that move. But what a battle here. Don't usually... I'm not used to these kind of battles in the last question mark challenge. Usually it's a case of just getting the overtake done and looking forward all the time, not looking backwards. But this time now, with the fuel being a bit more critical on it and with the DRS there, uh, you know, Bottas and Grosjean fancying themselves to try and ruin my, uh, my challenge and try try and retake the positions I've taken off them. But now you can see on the last half of the Grand Prix, Bottas is back again. Bit more contact made as we go wheel to wheel. Once again for the second time now in this Grand Prix, literally banging wheels there into the middle of that S section. But we're going to stay in P2 just about as we got the inside line there. Cover that off. And as Kimi Raikkonen goes across the line to win the Bahrain Grand Prix, we will keep P2 just about there. But, uh, you know, Bottas brewing a very, very good adversary at the end of the race there with the overspeed he has with the Mercedes engine. But we do get P2 then, and it's a 1-2 for Ferrari. So we'll see if any of that, Verstappen going out, maybe the Red Bulls tangling, Hamilton out the Grand Prix, a great result for Ferrari. We'll see if any of that is uh, able to happen in tomorrow's Grand Prix. But, guys, yeah, if you guys did enjoy that video, hit that like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're new around here, do get subscribed for weekly fall on content. Remember, guys, I have have my uh, top five moments from the Bahrain Grand Prix going out tomorrow uh, uh, shortly after the real life Grand Prix ends. You guys seem to really, really enjoy that at the Australian Grand Prix. So I really do appreciate all the comments and the good feedback from that. And so we'll have that for you guys tomorrow for the Bahrain Grand Prix. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.